Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to welcome everyone to a Monday morning with Meet a Scientist. Uh, my name is Patricia Sasson. I'm from Primetime Palm Beach County, and I am the STEAM Specialist in Professional Development. And I'm happy to be here with Meet a Scientist and with Brian and Stephanie, who are also hosting and moderating behind the scenes. Uh, Brian and Stephanie are from Scientists in Every Florida School. Um, today, we are going to learn about Florida bears from our guest scientist, David, David Telesco. So I welcome David Telesco and all our programs in Palm Beach County. Thank you. Thanks, Patricia. I just wanted to say hi and good morning, everybody. And just a couple of reminders from Scientists in Every Florida School. If you would please be sure to use the chat box for any questions you have for David, we will make sure to get to those very shortly. Uh, without further ado, we're going to turn things over to All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I uh, really appreciate you joining us today. Um, and we're going to start off with a question. What kind of bears do we have in Florida? Any ideas? Very good. Wow. You guys hit it out of the park immediately. I'm impressed. It's Monday morning. Um, yes. So we have Florida black bears and I happen to have a Florida black bear right here. Now, this is a adult female Florida black bear. Okay. Now you might think, why is she so still? <clears throat> this is actually a bear that unfortunately was hit by a car, but we have her fur and her teeth and her claws and everything so you can see up close what a Florida black bear looks like, okay? Now, when you look at her, well, let me back up. First things first, we only have Florida black bears in Florida. We don't have brown bears. We don't have polar bears or anything else. Um, so when people talk about, oh, I saw a bear, the only bear they're going to see in the wild in Florida is a black bear. And that's what most bears are in the United States, in the 48 uh, continental states, most of them are black bears. You're not going to find many uh, brown bears. Uh, and then polar bears are only up way up north. So looking at our black bear, what I want you to notice is obviously she's black, right? Um, but she's also got some tan on her muzzle. Uh, but take a look. What is the most prominent thing about her? You've got ears. You know, you've got your eyes, they look pretty small, and you got your tongue, but the most prominent thing is her nose. She has the best sense of smell of any land mammal. She can smell over a mile away. If you guys have heard of bloodhounds that police use to track people who are lost, they can smell seven times better than a bloodhound. And a bloodhound can smell 300 times better than we can. So basically, this bear can walk into the woods and know exactly where the fruit tree is a mile away just by smelling. So she's really good at smelling. Now, another thing that I want you to notice about her is her claw. Okay, so you can see her claws. Now, the claws are curved. That tells you that she can actually climb trees. She climbs trees when she's afraid, and she also climbs trees for food. So if you think about that, if they're acorns or hickory nuts up in a tree, um, she doesn't have to wait for them to fall like a deer would. She can actually go up there and get the food herself. That gives her a big advantage. Now, you might wonder, okay, well, how big is this bear? Well, when she's alive, she was 200 pounds, okay? Uh, and that's pretty good size for an adult female. Adult males can be double that size. So an adult male, maybe 400 pounds. The biggest male we've ever had is 760 pounds. 
that guy was huge. Um, so yeah, they can get really, really big. But again, only black bears here in Florida. So talk a little bit more about bears and what makes them unique. Now you take a look at this. You see, this is the skulls. This is the hard part of their head, okay? So here's their eyes right here nose, and then this is the mouth. So I talked about how great their sense of smell is. We'll take a look at that nose cavity. Look at all those nooks and crannies. That's why they have such a good sense of smell. They have so many different avenues that go directly to their brain to figure out what's going on in the environment just by smell. Now, most impressive and kind of intimidating are these big canines, okay? So these teeth right here these are the canines, okay? If you see an animal like that, automatically they are considered a carnivore. So carnivore would be a meat eater. But I gotta tell you guys that even though black bears are pretty intimidating looking, almost everything they eat are plants. 80% of their diet are plants. And one way to tell is to look at the teeth. So if you look at the inside of the teeth, you see those are wide and flat. So those are the molars. The molars are wide and flat. That means that they use their teeth for grinding, okay? A true carnivore, a true meat eater is like a red fox. So here's a red fox skull, okay? And take a look at high and sharp, okay? So those molars are just sharp for cutting. They're not for grinding. So the molars on a black bear are a lot like our molars. If you run your tongue on your molars, you can feel they're flat, just like this guy, okay? Now, another pretty neat thing we know about black bears just by looking at their teeth is how old they are. So remember, this is the jawbone. So if I was a bear, I, uh, I, it's my jaw right there. So take a look, here's your big canine. But what about this little teeny tooth right here? This is called a premolar. When we wonder how old the bear is, we pull that premolar out. It is tiny. It's including the root, the size of my pinky nail. So we pull that and cut it in half. And believe it or not, just like a tree, it has rings. So it has a growth season in spring and summer, and then it doesn't grow much in the winter. So we can actually count those blue rings and found out exactly how old the bear is. That's pretty cool. At least I think so. So there's our bear skull, there's our bear pelt. We call it a pelt when it's like this, okay? So one thing that we learn about bears um, is we have to catch them, okay? So one thing we can do is we can catch them in a big box that we have on a trailer, we tow behind our truck if it's in a neighborhood. Um, if it's in the woods, we catch it with a snare. And then once we've catched it, we actually, we can put, it, it goes to sleep a little bit with a dart. And you can see that little, uh, looks like a, I guess a flower petal on top. That's actually for a blow gun. So we actually have this pipe and we blow the dart. Okay, and this goes into the bear. And then within 10 minutes, it sleeps for about an hour. So once it gets that, we can check on the teeth, like I said, um, we measure it, we weigh it, but then what we also could do is put a collar on it. So this is a radio collar, okay? This big box below is a GPS, or global positioning system, and then the little box is a transmitter. So if this does not work, we have a backup system. But basically, how this works is it lets us know where the bear is, and we can actually program it and let us know where the bear is at different times. Now this looks pretty heavy, right? But the number one thing you have to remember about wildlife research is that we wanna know what an animal does that's healthy and, and, and doing well. We would not put this on a small animal, okay? So we put this, it has to be 5% or less the body weight. So it has to be fairly, fairly light. Um, so one thing that we'll do is we'll put this on the animal and then we track it. So I have a great, illustration of how we track bears. So here you go. I'm a biologist, not an artist. So we have our bear, 
Okay, and then we have our person in the truck is going to track the bear. So they have what's called a receiver. So here is the antenna. We call it an H or a rubber ducky because it's flexible. And then we track where is that bear. We dial it in just like a radio station on this box and we can listen. And if we're pointing, pointing at the bear, it'll make a beep. Beep, beep, beep. And if it's not pointing, beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, and so the transmitter is this top part. Okay, so when we get a location, the strongest beep, we draw a line. And that means that the bear is somewhere along that line. But that's not very helpful. I need to know more. So then I'll drive my car down the road and I'll get another signal. Okay, that, that's pretty good, right? I, I, I'm starting to get a feel for where this bear is, but then I'm gonna drive again and I'll get another signal. That's where the bear is. That's called triangulation. And so that's what a GPS does with satellites. We don't even have to be in our car anymore. The satellite, three different satellites get locations on us exactly like this. And that's how we tell where the bear is. That's also how we tell where our car is on the maps and our fancy uh, phones tell us where we are. That's all triangulation. So that's how we do it with our animals. And then the neat thing about this collar is you see there's a little box right here. When it's done and we are not locating it anymore, we push a button poop, and it pops off all on its own. And then we use, we actually have to go on the ground and then we use a transmitter to find and pick up the collar. So that's how we know a lot more about bears um, because we're able to catch them and put collars on them and weigh them and sort of things like that. Um, so we had a question, what is the collar weigh? The collar weighs about three to five pounds. And again, here's the thing, we have to make sure that the collar itself is not gonna be a burden on the bear. And so I've told you that the important thing is that, you know, 5% of the body weight or less, I put transmitters on bats. Now the transmitter itself is probably half of my pinky nail and it only lasts a day. This, most of the weight on this is actually the battery. The battery is what lasts and this lasts for about a year before it, it uh, comes off. Uh, and I think another question we had was, um, which one's bigger, the male or the female? Remember, the female is about half the size of the male. So the male is definitely a lot bigger uh, once they become adults. So I have another thing that I wanna share with you guys. This is how we learn what they eat. Now you might think, well, do, I, do we follow them around? Do we watch them while they're eating? We don't have to do that because we can look at their scat. Now, scat is what biologists talk about is poop, okay? But we like to say scat because it sounds a lot more scientific. Um, but if you look at this, this is real bear scat. Um, this is, I think now 12 years old um, and I put plastic over it. So I'm actually only touching the plastic, but this is really what it looks like. And you can see all those different seeds, those are gallberry. So gallberry is about the size of a blueberry and every single one they ate had a seed. So you can imagine how many gallberries this bear ate. The reason why I can tell how much or what they're eating just by looking at their scat is because most of what they eat are plants. If it was meat, I wouldn't be able to tell. But plants, you leave seeds behind or you leave husks if it's an acorn or hickory nut. So you can imagine that just by seeing this, I know what that bear is eating at that time of year. And it changes depending on um, what time of year it is. And so pretty much anything you see that's that big or bigger, it's probably going to be a bear scat. Um, if it's a lot smaller than that, which is more likely in a lot of areas in Florida, it's probably raccoon because raccoons and bears eat about the same thing. You can kind of think of a bear as a giant raccoon. But I talked about what they eat and let me show you. So we've got hickory nut. Okay, so this is usually available in the fall and it's really, really hard. So they've got to use those molars to crack it. And then 
we've got an acorn. Now this is a really big acorn, but they come in all different shapes and sizes depending on what oak species produces it. So remember, oak produces an acorn, hickory nut from a hickory tree. So they actually eat, believe it or not, 20,000 calories a day in the fall. Now you and I, we're supposed to eat 2,000 calories. So what we eat in 10 days, they're trying to eat in one day. Um, that's because they do get ready for hibernation. And I think it's a great question. Why would they hibernate in Florida? I mean, a couple of days ago, it was 60 degrees in Tallahassee. Well, a lot more than just temperature goes into why they hibernate. One of the big reasons is actually our females give birth to their cubs when they're in their den. So they, um, <clears throat> so around February 1st, most of our, our bears are going to be born. And hey, it's February 1st. So it's like happy birthday to all those bear cubs who are getting born. Um, mom has to stay with the cubs and stay put for, I would say, probably a few months. Um, they're only 12 ounces when they're born. So you imagine that, a 200-pound bear, only 12 ounces at birth. So it's about the size of a can of Coke. That's pretty weird. Um, but by the time they're ready to come out of their dens in April, they're about five pounds. Now they keep up with mom and mom starts roaming further and further, teaches them what they need to know. They'll stay with mom for a year and a half um, and then they'll be on their own. And, the, and usually the moms let the daughters adopt part of their home range so this is where they roam every day or, or across the year. And then the, the young males, they go off and find their own place. So that's usually what a bear population looks like, a bunch of related females and then different males. So we talk about their size, we talk about how we learn about them. One thing that's also very unique that I want you guys to know is how they walk. They walk flat-footed like we do. So take a look at this bear print. If you look at it, this is the hind foot or the back foot of a bear. And if I cover up those claws, that looks like one of our footprints, doesn't it? It's because they walk on their heel. That is very different than most animals. Most animals that you see, they walk on four toes. And that dew claw on your cat or your dog, that's their thumb. They're actually built for running. We are not built for running, neither are bears. Although, believe it or not, as big and slow as they look, they can sprint 35 miles an hour. They can go pretty fast. So that's the back foot. And you know how our hand and our feet look different? Same with a bear. So that's the front foot. So five toes, one, two, three, four, five. And then here's their, here's their pad right here. So five toes in the print and anything this big, it's not gonna be anything but a bear. And bears cover, regularly you can see bears in about half of Florida. We have over 4,000 bears in Florida. Um, and most of them are around big forests. They really like that forest because they don't like to be seen. They like to be kind of in the shadows as much as they possibly can. Um, so one thing I'll grab over here now. You might be like, okay, why do you have a garbage can? That's weird, we're talking about bears. Believe it or not, most people see bears when they're getting garbage. Now we think garbage, ugh. Garbage actually has a lot of calories. That pizza crust that you didn't eat, threw in the trash, maybe the, the cinnamon roll frosting that's left on the tin foil that you threw out, the bears eat all that up. And so that's when they get into trouble. So the big thing we do is make sure, hey guys, if you live in an area with bears, keep your trash secure. So take a look. On this trash can, you see these two metal pass? You can open them up, put your trash in, close it, and lock them down. And then that can is secure from bears. And then you open it up on the morning of pickup so the garbage can dump your trash. So this is important because it's great to have bears, but it's not great to have bears in your trash can. We wanna avoid that at all costs. So um, I've talked a lot about bears. Uh, I wanna hear from you guys. What questions do you have for me about bears? David, thank you so much for teaching us all about bears and what's happening all around us and how we could help keep them safe. Uh, our first question today is going to be one from Evelyn who says, 
if you can fit a GPS in an Apple Watch, why is the Bear Collars GPS so large? That's a great question. And honestly, we're getting better and better at technology. The reason why your Apple Watch can be smaller is because this has got to have a giant battery in it that we cannot come and charge at any time. You know, your watch, you can regularly charge it. So the GPS system itself, the technology is small. This big thing is mostly the battery. That's really the big weight when it comes to this kind of thing. Our next question is, what adaptations do black bears have for Florida weather that allows them to tolerate our climate? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. So um, I want to show you, and hopefully it'll show up on camera. So when you look at the bear fur, you've got this big, you know, we call them black bear because they've got these long black fur. But underneath, there's actually stuff called underhair. So the underhair, they shed a lot more than other bears. So they actually don't have as dense of a coat, um, especially our bears in Florida. So Collier County, all those stuff, they actually look brown because they have such thin uh, coat. They do spend a lot of time in the water. That helps too. And then when it's the heat of the day, you're not going to see them because they're laying up in the shade. So they, they try to regulate their body temperature by that. Great question. Next up, we're curious, why does Florida only have black bears? Well, um, black bears, uh, basically prehistoric times, black bears are across all of North America and then brown bears were only in a part of it. So a section of it. Black bears are omnivores, so they eat both plants and animals. And brown bears, they're omnivores, but they eat a lot more meat. So they have a different kind of diet. They tend to be associated with mountains um, and they tend to be out in the Rockies. So out West, you think of Montana, Wyoming, Utah, places like that. So black bears in general are, I mean, most of North America. So jumping back to the idea of the GPS, why do we care where bears are at different times? That is a great question. So there's a lot of things we learn by knowing what bears are doing at different times of the year. So what happens is, let's say, for example, we know where the bears cross a road. Well, we can go to Department of Transportation and say, hey, can you maybe put an underpass? So like a little tunnel so the bears can go underneath or even fancier, an overpass. So it's a big bridge for animals to go across. And there's several of these, actually in South Florida, there's a bunch of these built for panthers and all sorts of animals use it, deer, bear, alligators, to safely cross roads. So that's one thing a GPS will do. The other thing tells us is what habitat is most important for them? I said you can see them in forests, but what time of year do they use different kinds of forests? And how do they move around? What's the most important den sites where they spend three months of the year um, pretty, pretty solid? So it tells us very specific things and what their needs are, uh, how far they roam. We know that males roam 60 square miles on average. We would only know that by tracking them. What is the geographic range of a black bear? Does it go as far south as the Everglades? Yes, so it does go Big Cypress National Preserve is where they typically are in South Florida. Um, so that's like the west side, the Gulf side. They're not really on the Atlantic side or the east side, which is helpful because that's where most of our people are in South Florida. Um, they tend not to cross through um, all the Everglades and things like that. So I would say just north of the Everglades would be a, a good estimate. Thank you. Uh, at what age is a black bear considered an adult? Um, we consider adults uh, between three and four years old. Uh, the females can uh, give birth at four. The males tend to be, have to be a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder. So even though they're mature at three or four, if they have to compete with other males, they probably won't actually be able to breed until maybe five or six. Um, so an adult would be probably 120 pounds, 150 pounds for a female. An adult male is about the same. And then, like I said, once they get bigger and bigger, the, your, your typical size is 200 for a female, 400 for a male. Christy is wondering, does the male bear help with raising the cubs at all? Actually, no, they don't. I know that's disappointing for a lot of you that I read all these great stories about Papa Bear, but Papa Bear does not take any part um, in, in child rearing. Mama has to do it all on her own, and she has to actually protect it from other males, whether it's the Papa or some other male, because 
they actually could eat them. So we have to keep space and she keeps a good uh, nose out to make sure no males are in the area when she's our, with her cubs. The South Olive Community Center asks, how tall can a black bear grow? Typically about six to seven feet. The one that was 760 pounds was about close to seven feet. It was very, very tall. And I'm glad he said tall because remember, because they walk on five toes, they can actually stand because they have that heel. So that anchors them. So when they stand up, it's pretty impressive. And Wendy is curious, how long can a bear live? Um, the oldest bear we know of in Florida was 24 years old. Uh, the oldest wild black bear um, that we know of is 39 years old in Minnesota. Um, but they're productive throughout their whole life. They have cubs every other year, because remember the cubs stay with them for a year and a half. And I've checked on females that are 22 years old and they have two really good looking cubs. So they're very long lived. Uh, Frank asks, what are the problems black bears face in Florida? Well, the problems that black bears face are kind of the problems that almost all wildlife uh, faces. We have 21, over 21 million people, and we are not the best at sharing space sometimes. Um, so, you know, we have to learn to live with our wild neighbors and make sure that we don't, um, you know, cause problems, but also make sure that we have natural places um, that, that the animals can be. And so for us, we think about habitat, where they live and how important that is to keep habitat in place, avoiding roads and getting hit by cars. And again, avoiding garbage cans and having conflicts with people. Those are the big threats for bears. Evelyn asks, how far away can you hear a bear roar? Believe it or not, Evelyn, bears do not roar. That is a Hollywood thing. When they open their mouth, they insert the roar. What bears do, believe it or not, they clack their jaws. That sounds not impressive, but Sort of like, now I'm not a 400 pound bear, but when they're upset, they'll clack their jaws and let you know. Now they may moan a little bit or huff, but they do not roar. And so you really don't hear them because they actually don't want to draw attention to themselves most of the time. Uh, our next question is how do bears help the environment? Great question. Um, so some, one of the things that bears are, are called, they're called a flagship species or an umbrella species. And what that means is bears range so far, like I said, 60, 100 square miles, and they have their needs met in a very big area. Well, within that area, if you're protecting or conserving that habitat for bears, you're helping all those other animals that have much smaller needs. And the bear is what gets people's attention, not the flatwood salamander not the burrowing owl that needs very little space. So protecting habitat for this big species actually helps all the littler, smaller species that use less space. The other thing they do is they disperse seeds. As I showed you, those are a lot of seeds. So if the bear is eating a bunch of plants and when they drop their scat, those seeds can grow. So they help with seed dispersal and they're also a cleanup crew. They'll eat uh, things that hit by a car. They'll, they'll clean it up like a vulture. So they've got a couple of different uses. Besides people, do bears have any predators? No, um, they are pretty much another bear is the only thing they have to worry about aside from people. And let's wrap up with one more question, which for today is going to be, why do bears scratch up against trees? And do you see any evidence of this in the Ocala forest? That is a great question. We call them mark trees. And there's a lot of different speculation on why they do it. Um, but what we think is that it's kind of a scent post. So as they rub up against and bite that bark and scratch it, they're leaving their scent behind. And so another animal can come and smell it and know what kind of bear has been there. Sometimes they can even tell uh, different aspects of it. And there are in different parts of, of Florida, including Ocala, if it's open enough, they'll, you can see a marked tree. Um, if it's really, really dense and there's bushes everywhere, they tend not to use them. But along a trail, if you see a bunch of rubbing and, and bear hair in it, that's a mark tree and they certainly will use them. Thank you so much, David. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn things over to Stephanie to uh, wrap things up for this uh, morning session. Thanks, Brian. All right. I'm just popping this up here for everybody to see. Give me one second. 
one second. There we go. So we hope you've enjoyed learning about black bears in Florida. I know I have. We want to say a very special thank you to David Telesco from um, the director of the bear management program at uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife. So thank you very much. And also thank you for um, being with us, Patricia, from the Palm Beach uh, Primetime Series. We appreciate you all. Scientists in Every Florida School, all the free programs we offer, you can find and learn more at our website. We've also shared with you the link to request a scientist in the chat box. And until next time, we hope uh, you have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll see you next time. Thanks.